You know, back when I was a teenager, I made my own lightsaber out of a bunch of my dad's washers and a wooden dowel. It fell apart almost immediately. Uh, since then, I haven't been able to fully scratch the lightsaber itch. I did buy this over on the replica prop form a couple years ago. It's metal and it looks the part, but it doesn't light up and it doesn't make sound. So I 3D modeled my own version of Luke's lightsaber and I made sure to modify it to look like the one that Ray uses in the upcoming movie. Oh, and also one more thing, huge thanks to our friends over at Synology for the assist on this project. More on them in a little bit. I've printed several versions of Luke's lightsaber there, but today I'm gonna to be focusing on the new one. This is Ray's from the new movie that isn't even out yet. Uh, there's a bunch of support material on here that I've gotta get rid of. Uh, I've always been fond of Luke's lightsaber, the, the sort of classic one that Obi-Wan <clears throat> gave that young lad on Tatooine. But of course there's so many lightsabers out there. I'm stoked for the new version, obviously, but I bet you've got a favorite lightsaber out there. Maybe you like Luke's green one from Return of the Jedi. Uh, let me know what your favorite one is, actually. I know there's a ton, uh, so please tell me in the comments what your favorite lightsaber is. And I'm going to clean up my parts like that. Look at that. 3D modeling is my jam. I went to school for 3D art and I'm pretty good at that part of it and these pieces look really great. The electronics though for the lights and sounds, not as much. So today, I'm bringing in a ringer. Sophie's here. Hello. Hey, Sophie Wong, local Seattleite maker and designer. And you brought us a yardstick today. I did. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So this is based on a tutorial from Adafruit's website, and all of these components come from Adafruit. So this is the microcontroller. It's basically the brain of the project. This is where we put all of our code, and this is what controls the lights and the sounds of the lightsaber. It's got an additional board on top of it that just adds a bit more functionality specifically for a prop like this. So it's got an accelerometer. It can tell what orientation the lightsaber is in. It's got a special output for our speaker and a special output for our lights. These lights are NeoPixel LEDs, so it's a strip of RGB LEDs, and they're all individually addressable. And that just means we can make them whatever color we want, and we can turn them on whenever we want. That okay. lets us make really cool animations. Oh, yeah. So uh, even though we're doing blue Luke's lightsaber, mm -hmm. it could be a red one or a green one with just tweaking a little bit of code. Exactly. And then and a big old battery on the bottom there? Big old battery on the bottom. I think we'll use something a little more compact for our build, mm -hmm. but that ought to keep us going for a while. Well, that's exciting. All right, and to turn it on, we just press this. That's cool. Oh, that was really, really fantastic. And I believe you said you got some LEDs that are a little more tightly packed, too. Yep, we got some that are basically double this density. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to put all of this in my lightsaber handle. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to go work on those to prepare uh, them to install all these bits. Mm -hmm. mm. Careful where you point that thing. I model all these in Fusion 360 and the files are free to download. We'll have a link below. Uh, I printed these on my Ultimaker in ABS because I like sanding ABS. Uh, some of them though are on the form too. Beautiful. Yeah, now you should be able to print all these parts on an FDM printer, but if you have a resin printer, these little knurls come out really, really nice. So good. So um, these pieces all can kind of fit together. Mm -hmm. um, so like this piece goes in there. Here, you give it a shot. All right. Uh, it should just pressure fit together. If you have to sand it a little bit, I mean, we're gonna sand the whole thing, but if it's snug, you can sand it to fit in. There's the top tube there. Mm -hmm and then this bottom tube. And I made this hole here to fit the switch to act actuate it. Perfect. So I'll go in there. Uh, and we can, once these parts are painted too, we'll be able to snug them all together. Awesome. Uh, this is the blade holder. So we have polycarbonate tubes for the blade and that fits snug in there. Nice. And then that goes in the end to uh, secure it firmly inside the oh. panel there. It goes till all of these features match up with oh, the ones on the outside. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then this hole will get a screw eventually mm -hmm. uh, that may need to be rotated yeah. 180 degrees. Let's do that. Like that, there we go. 
that hole and that hole line up, mm -hmm. and eventually we'll put a screw in there, and that's mm -hmm. what's going to retain the blade for us. It's going to pressure down against the tube. Yeah, just gotcha. like that. Uh, and then we have some more parts here. These are the fins that go on there. Um, mm -hmm. I actually modeled them with little uh, pegs that should fit in there. Cool. Um, but then the support material, <laughs> when oh. I printed it, <laughs> filled that in. So I just sanded these, uh, and they'll get glued over there. Uh, and then we have a ton of little bits and bobs. I mentioned the these. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. And then uh, this little guy. Yeah. Which I actually printed on I the I can't FBI. believe that came out. Yep, that goes over there. Wow. Just like that. Uh, and then a ton more little things that we're going to have to clean up and get ready for assembly in our uh, awesome. lightsaber handle here. This looks amazing. It's really cool. It's actually identical. And then when you put it together, it nests like that, oh. or like that, and uh, then it's all nice and even. Uh, but anyway, nice. we uh, I did a little bit of sanding. I cleaned up some of the parts, but you know, I'm a good friend. I figured I'd leave you some fun work. So Thank we're you gonna so go, much. we're gonna go grab some sandpaper <laughs> and get to work. Awesome. Our sanding adventure starts with 220 grit sandpaper. Sweet. So the goal here will be to get rid of all the layer lines if we can. Mm -hmm. There are some really tiny bits like these little things here, so we want to be careful yeah. around those. Okay. Uh, and then I also have some needle files to uh, knock down any offending bits. So there's some spots where the uh, support material touched down, it's a little yeah. gnarly, we can work on that. And okay. then uh, uh, sometimes there's a lip that needs to be removed so pieces okay. fit together. Mm -hmm. And again, that needle file is going to be our, our favorite tool for the job. Awesome. All right, time to roll up our sleeves. <laughs> Let's do it. Make a lot of dust. <laughs> Oh, that's a good noise. This is it. This is like 90% of prop making right here. Using a little piece of sandpaper to sand a teeny little part. Looks perfect. <laughs> It looks like the support material failed and I got a little bit of a droop there and I want this to be a circle. So I'm gonna use my rotary tool to clean that up a little bit. Gentle. There, that looks okay. So I'm just gonna cut off the support material. Try not to take too much of the actual part with it. Oh, there we go. I'll just clean that up a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Mm. I got most of the layer lines done, but there are some spots like where the um, supports touch down, mm. some little cavities, so I think I'll fill those. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna fill that stuff in with some of this air drying spot putty. It shouldn't take a lot, and this dries really fast. Uh, and then I can sand it down nice and smooth. Just a little more cleanup work here. These uh, rectangular spots are pretty good, but we can make them a little bit cleaner with like a needle file. So I'll just go in and just carefully and slowly square that up. Again, like the support material kind of uh, mm -hmm. kind of made it a little gnarly. Uh, these needle files, by the way, are amazing for working on 3D prints. And we'll have a link to this and all the tools we use down in the description. Uh, do you want to give this a shot? Yeah. There you go. The uh, needle files will remove material with surprising efficiency, so you don't have to push too hard. Uh, but it's a great way to get a really clean finish on your 3D prints. It's really great for getting into those corners. Oh yeah. My parts are looking pretty good. How are we looking, Sophie? Good, I think we might be ready to prime soon. All right, before we prime it though, I think these main pieces should get glued together like such. Like that, I think that uh, um, if we paint these first, there'll be paint on here and it'll be mm. difficult to fit them together. So right. we'll put those together first. And I think a five minute epoxy will give us plenty of working time to do that. We won't need a ton of glue. The, the fit's really, really snug. Um, we just need enough to hold it in there. So I'm gonna brush a tiny bit on with, with this acid brush and I don't want there to be a lot of squeeze out, so I'm being extremely ginger here. This piece goes in there. That hole needs to line up with that hole, so that can go in. And I can rotate it until these little holes line up. Some screws are gonna go in there later. Let me look at that, yeah. 
So that'll fit in there, but I'm also gonna double check the switch, the button that goes in to activate it. I'm gonna set it in there and make sure it fits correctly. There we go. And it does. If those two holes are misaligned, then this won't fit through there. But we're good. I can hold that off for now. And I can put this guy in there. And these two holes line up with these two holes, just like that. And if these are misaligned a little bit, it's not a big deal. I don't need a power switch or anything to go through there. So that, that is that. I can let that cure for five minutes and then we can get on to the rest of the finishing. We got everything to 200 and it's looking pretty good. You could wet sand this to 2000 if you wanted to, but we're gonna call it good here and just use a scotch Brite pad to buff it a little bit and then, then we can prime it. Okay. Uh, we're not looking to get like a perfect finish on this. We just want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm gonna get this ready for priming on this double stick tape. There we go. I'm just gonna leave that end off so it'll be easier to take it off when it's done. After uh, two rounds of sanding and priming, it's looking really great. Uh, everything's nice and dry. I'm, we just have this um, scotch bright scotch bright pad. That's the word, and we're giving it a final buff before painting. You can even like uh, put a little bit of a simulated uh, brushed sort of metal look in there by kind of rotating it in the direction it would go. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's going to come through in the final paint job, but I really just want a nice smooth surface for our painting. It is time for our first round of paint. We're going with a gloss black, and then we're gonna put a, a metallic coat over that. Mm -hmm. But the gloss black is this lacquer, all cloud lacquer. Okay. Already loaded up in the airbrush. Sweet. And uh, about 20 PSI on the compressor. And then all we have to do is cover these parts of black paint. Okay. And uh, you can do two passes, like a lighter dust coat and then a wet coat afterwards. We'll probably do that. Mm -hmm. So that's just a light dust coat. We'll do that first. The first coat is, is dry to the touch, so now we're gonna do the wet coat. And you gotta be brave with this, because you have to cover the whole surface you're doing in one pass. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you'll get like sort of the, the fall off, the dust on it. So. We're gonna be brave. All right, <laughs> you first. I will show you what we're doing here. I have a good wet layer covering the entire surface and we have that really decent, even glossy sheen. That's what we're going for. Just enough to get that without so much paint that it starts to drip off the part. The last step is our polished aluminum from mm -hmm. All Clad More Lacquer. Uh, this is like the magic trick. We have this glossy base coat and then when we spray just a little bit of this on, it turns into metal. It's really cool. There we go. The gloss black is what really makes it shiny, which makes it sell as metal. And that's it's pretty amazing. cool. amazing. So some parts are gonna get this, but like the handle fins, those will stay black. Okay. Otherwise, let's paint everything else metal. Sweet. The last bit of color is the red on this knob. This is my uh, purchased <laughs> replica. This is the one I made. Uh, so I'm gonna mask off everything except for that little red button on the top, or what will be a red button. And then for the paint, I have this hot metal red, also all clad. It's transparent, so it should keep some of that metallic sheen, but also make it red, kind of like an anodized finish. I'm afraid to put too much on. I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Hey, that is a fairly convincing anodized aluminum. The, the paint is pretty dry. Uh, we want to protect it though, so we're gonna mm -hmm. do a clear coat. Now all the metal parts 
metal looking parts. I want to use aqua gloss, more all clad stuff, mm -hmm. really great. Uh, but I'm thinking for the fins, they should be a little bit more of a matte. So I have a matte varnish for that. Awesome. Yeah. It's it looks so nice. Shiny. It's so shiny. And it's mostly dry. Uh, at least uh, one, dry enough. one pizza lunch worth of drying. <laughs> uh, and we can start putting everything together. And I think we should start with these handle fins. Okay. I designed some holes there, but they're not big enough for the screws I want to install. So make that a little bigger carefully. And then the, uh, the screws I have, these are just like stainless M4s. They look, they sure look the part, don't they? Like that. Oh yeah, yeah perfect. It's pretty close. So these can just get driven right in there uh, and you don't even need to really tap it, you could, uh, but you can just drive those okay. right through all of those. Okay. Pretty damn good. That looks awesome. That yeah. little bit of metal just sells it. Doesn't it? Yeah. And then these will eventually go here. Oh like yeah. That, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I designed these little nubbins to line up and then they didn't work on my print. So I glued a piece of styrene on there. Perfect. And then the screw for this one should help. And that's really just for alignment. It's not going to be uh, doing any heavy lifting, mm -hmm. so to speak. We're going to glue it into place, but that'll just help yeah. us get in the right spot. There we go. While Sophie's working on that, I can install our little D-ring holder. And I have screws that'll screw into there, but I also want to glue it. So I'm going to scratch a little bit of paint off of the area where it'll connect. So there's bare plastic there, bare plastic on the bottom of this. Just a little bit of super glue. And then I want to make sure that my holes are lined up because I do need to drive some screws through there. And it's just threading right into the ABS plastic. Nice snug fit. Uh, not too tight though, I don't want to strip the threads on that plastic. And this part goes in here. Like that. Thank you, Sophie. Mm -hmm. These are going to go all around here. Uh, and just like we did on uh, this part here, I definitely want to scratch some paint off. Again, the bottom's good, but between these two holes, this is so, we just painted this. And this <laughs> is know. almost painful. But I can scratch down to the plastic and have a good spot for our glue up. Putting glue down where I scratched it, because that's really the only place it's going to stick well. And then this will go there, and this goes on the bottom. Like that. I'm saying this as much for my benefit as yours. <laughs> to get this to stick right away, I'll just spray it with some uh, super glue activator on the back here. And I'm, I don't want to get any of this on the paint if I can avoid it. And then you just set it down. And those little pins should help everything line up perfectly. And then I can hold it until the uh, glue grabs on. You could do this with a five minute epoxy. If you did that, I would do all of them and like put tape around it to hold them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can tell just by touching it that this paint is not dry. <laughs> and tape <laughs> would probably pull that finish right off. Next piece I think should be this one here. This is gonna hold the blade and it goes snug in there, but when I tried to put it in, it got stuck because the paint we added made it a little too snug. So I'm gonna sand um, a bunch of this away, but these indented circles in the top need to remain black. That's a little better. It's pretty snug. I feel like when I push that all the way in, it's gonna be there forever. But before I do that, I wanna cut a thread in that hole because eventually this screw will go through there. So I'm gonna use it to make the threads now so that later it will screw in very easily. There we go, it's all the way through. And I can take this out. There. Should slide in nice and snug. No glue necessary. The uh, screw should hold it in place, and uh, that's really snug, so I don't think it's coming out of here. This will retain the blade eventually when that's in there too, so I can loosen this to install the blade. Just like that, and there is a little bit of screw hanging out there, and that's good. These are M3 screws that I got. Uh, they're decorative, they go just around the handle. I guess that's how Ray put everything back together. Uh, so we can just drill those ha out a little bit and then thread these in just like the rest of the screws. I think the next thing I want to install are these uh, weird things. And I want to try and put a screw through all of them to hold everything in place. I, I may still glue these in place, but I do want to try and thread this. 
which means that this needs to fit loosely through both of these holes on these parts and this one, but that one needs to be tapped with an M3 tap. And these are really thin and fragile, so instead of drilling, I'm gonna use this tapered rotary tool to enlarge these holes to the, the diameter of this shank, which is, which is an eighth of an inch, which is good enough for this screw. Oh, that was, uh, that was super easy. Next hole. There we go. That's a little bigger and I'll use this tap to uh, thread it. I am doing this tap by hand because there is absolutely no way to get the drill in here. And also I'd probably break this. The plastic is quite soft so it's not too hard. There. Now this should be able to go all the way through and thread into that. Uh, I also need to enlarge these holes. Excellent. Time to install these bad boys and they're identical pieces and you just flip one over and there's only one way it goes correctly, which is that this, not as much. So I'm gonna try and install it just like that. That goes through there. Just trying to line everything up. <laughs> Look at it, it actually works the way it's supposed to. Oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> it's it's delicate for sure. I don't, I'm gonna hold off on gluing it unless I feel like I need to. Mm -hmm. This little piece though goes uh, over them mm -hmm. and I think I'm just gonna tack it down on one side with a little bit of super glue. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's kind of how that goes. Actually, I can do that right now. That's so great. And then the tube slides in there. That's, I really hope so. I'm <laughs> 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 just gonna kind of tack it down with a little bit of glue and then open these things up until it's held in place. Look at that. It's all according to plan. Time for these little bits here. Just wanna make sure this is centered where that goes. Whoops, I need that to calm down. There we go. That's where that goes. Just a little glue around this rim and we can install it. I think I put a little too much glue right there. And this is definitely where this switch goes for Ray's lightsaber. This different one goes on the other side. In fact, I can install that right now. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Next is the tiniest little piece ever. And of course I made it separate because that's how I roll. That's in the right spot now, kind of. This part is purely cosmetic. It's not doing any real lifting, but this one has it. And now, so does mine. Need to install the little activator thing. And I put a hole through this for our button. This will be how we turn our lightsaber on and off. So that's what that hole is. Obviously, it doesn't look like that in the movie but I needed an easy way to install a button. I will paint this brass before it gets installed though. All right, I think there's only one tiny little detail left, Sophie. Oh, that little guy. Tiny little <laughs> things, yeah. I don't know what these really are, but I bought a little brass rod from the hobby store and just cut it to little tiny pegs. And I'm gonna install them in those tiny little holes, uh, but I need to make a little room, make them the right size first. I can grab one of my tiny little pegs and my special little pliers and put a little bit of glue on them. That's it, just a tiny bit. And install it. And I wanna make sure it's not poking through the other side because the blade needs to go through there and this will keep that from working. So I'm just feeling with my left finger. Yeah, that looks good. That is looking mighty fine. And we only have one more addition. There's a piece of leather that I guess Ray added. Uh, but if you were doing one of the different versions like the Empire Strikes Back or the A New Hope version, it would look like that. And it's got some different options. Mm -hmm. What do you got there, Sophie? Bill printed two of these, and this is the version I'm keeping. It's from A New Hope. And it's got just a couple of different pieces on it. This bit here is gonna slide into, I don't know what that is called. It's called the activator. The activator, oh yeah, okay. So here's what the activator looks like on the A New Hope version, and that's gonna slide in right here. 
And right next to it, this little guy will slide in right here. And I think um, we might just drive a screw through there so there's a little bit poking out on mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. so that this has something to glue on to. Gotcha. There we go, and there's a little bit sticking out there so that we can glue that. We're going with JB Weld on this one. This is their five minute stuff. It bonds really well to metal, so it should hold it to that screw. Uh, it'll hold really anything to anything else pretty well, <laughs> <laughs> but it's especially good for metal. Right in right here. There. Well, like that. There you go. Okay, okay, now I'm going in. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? I think I can use the, the tip of this mm -hmm. to just get a little bit more of that glue around the threads of that screw. Okay. And that way, it'll bond really well. Yeah, that looks good. Great. Okay, we've got a little bit here. Can Maybe squeeze we can out? Just, yep. Let's see if we can remove a little bit of that. That's yeah, a little better. That looks good. Great. In you go. Oh, oh it's so perfect. And just like this guy, I made a hole for the uh, button to go in there to turn it on and off. Oh, it's gonna be just awesome. replace one of these little, little domes. Uh, and that looks snug enough. We, you could glue that if you want to. That looks like it's in there. Mm -hmm. I bet the switch will hold it in place. Absolutely. Sophie, that's looking really cool. Oh, I love it. So this part here, I think was originally a part of a, a calculator. And I know mm -hmm. it's supposed to be clear. Mm -hmm. So if someone wanted to, they could mold and cast that in a clear resin. Oh, uh, right. We just painted our silver though. Yeah. I think it looks pretty fantastic. It looks great. Yeah, and that yours looks beautiful. Oh, isn't that cool? I think we have all the details added on yours before we do electronics, but mm -hmm. mine has one more part on Ray's new lightsaber. There's a piece of leather that wraps around here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do next. Cool. I made the pattern for this leather part by wrapping the 3D print in tape, trimming it off. So now I have the exact size I need and shape. And then I'm going to trace that on this piece of leather. This is just a scrap of leather that I found in our pile of leather scraps, and I think it looks really nice. So I'm gonna trace it, cut it out. While I'm cutting this piece out, I wanna talk about the incredible sponsor for this video, Synology. They reached out to us a few months back to help with our file storage, which was wonderful because we were completely out of hard drive storage for all of our prop files, and most importantly, our video files. They hooked us up with one of their networked attached storage devices, the DiskStation DS1019 Plus. A NAS is a network hard drive that can be accessed by any computer on that network. We have several computers in our office and shop, and they all have access to every file needed for building all of our props and costumes, making our videos, and running our business. The disk station also makes local redundant copies of all of my files, keeping those videos safe from hard drive failure, which as someone who makes videos for a living, helps me sleep at night. What's even more amazing is that I was able to share all of my lightsaber files with Sophie while we were prototyping this project and she could access everything she needed to make sure her electronics would fit with my 3D printed parts. This helped our collaboration in so many ways. It made working remotely on a collaboration smooth and easy. The disk station is an excellent long-term solution, but you can also set it up as a media server using Plex or Synology's own app to stream music and videos to any device in your house. And you can hook up a camera to set it up as a surveillance station and keep an eye on your shop or home, which is something I'm seriously considering setting up, especially since I could use it to keep an eye on my 3D prints. There is a ton more stuff you can do with a NASC like the disk station, and we'll have links to Synology's website where they have additional information and solutions, plus links to retailers that carry Synology's products. All of that information is down in the description. Thank you Synology so much for helping us with this video and solving our file storage problem. All right, let's finish up this last bit of Ray's lightsaber handle. My leather piece is ready to go. I used this stuff here, my buddy Bjorn left uh, to clean up the edges. We have a whole video we did with him that's like everything you need to know about leather craft. If you wanna go check that out, it'll be in the description. Uh, I cleaned up the fuzzy bits. I didn't want any fuzzy things sticking out underneath this. Uh, it fits, it goes all the way around, and I think I'll just glue it down with super glue, but this is the painful part. I need to scratch through this paint down to the plastic so it's got a good, surface to glue to. Oh. The sound is terrible. There's no going back. Nope. <laughs> Nails on a chalkboard. 
I think I hear the lightsaber screaming in pain. Oh. It's like, no, I'm so beautiful. I want to leave a little bit around the edge that's undamaged because that'll be showing, but uh, yeah. Time to do something extremely permanent. <laughs> that's good to go. Uh, I already did a test fit and I'm just going to glue all the way around. I want to make sure that this edge around it stays nice and tacked down. Tack that end down. Careful with the squeeze out. So far, so good. It's incredibly tense in here right now. <laughs> uh, now this is probably cow leather, but Sophie, what do you think from the Star Wars universe this leather came from? What creature? Ooh. Space slug? Ooh. <laughs> it's well, hard to get, you know, you gotta go to an asteroid. It's true, true. <laughs> well, if it was bantha leather, you could make, you know, bazillions. Yeah. <laughs> Tatooine's just lousy with banthas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> Look at it. It's beautiful. I love this. There's something about using real leather on a project that just takes it up a notch. Yep. And I love how it adds just another layer. Yeah, you got the step down. Yep. Good choice, Ray. What'd you make it out of? <laughs> <laughs> Our handles are done. And they look beautiful. Oh, so excited. And if this was just a prop for your belt, you could be done. Yeah. But we want lights and sounds. Let's and make it light up. Sophie's hooked us up, and I designed a little sled that all of the gizmos should attach to. Perfect. And pretty proud of this. It uh, slides right into the handle like that, holding everything. So. Do awesome. your thing, electronics wizard. Let's do it. Okay, so these are all the components that we're going to need to build our lightsaber. And they all came from Adafruit, and they're all referenced in the Adafruit tutorial on their lightsaber build. So the first thing we need to do is get our headers soldered onto our boards so we can fit them together. So I'm just going to put these headers into a breadboard for soldering. And I like to do this because it keeps the board stable and it just holds everything in place nicely while I'm soldering and nothing slides around like that. So I'm just soldering the headers onto the feather wing and that way we'll be able to plug this directly in to the microcontroller. I'm just trying to be quick. We don't want to melt anything else on the board, but we do want a nice connection for each pin. So when I'm soldering like this, I always try to have my hands braced on the table, and that just keeps me nice and stable as I'm trying to solder these tiny, tiny pins. I'm also trying to make sure when I put the soldering tip down that it's touching the pin and the board. So I'm just gonna do a visual check and make sure that nothing is bridged and all the pins are soldered separately. Because if anything's touching, we're gonna short the board out, but it looks great. So now I'm gonna take it out. Now to put the headers in this board, I'm gonna align them by just plugging them into the feather wing. And then putting the feather wing in place like that, and then popping this into a vise. And that'll just hold it for me nice and steady, and nothing will move when I'm soldering. And then we do the same thing to this, to this bit. We just solder all the pins in place. Happy little soldered pins. So I'm just gonna snip the tops off of all these little pins so they don't touch anything we don't want them to touch. And I just put my finger over, over it as I'm snipping it so it doesn't fly up into my face. So our prop maker has a port for the speaker to plug into, so I just need to put this plug on our speaker. There's nothing wrong with these wires, I just want to be put the plug on it so we can plug it in and out easily. There we go. And because we're only doing one speaker, uh, it doesn't really matter which way these wires go on. All right, so now I'm just adding a connector for our button. So the button is gonna be soldered right here into these two pins. Oh, there we go, there we go. 
Yeah, that one looks good. So now I'm just gonna solder a connector onto the switch. And for the switch, it doesn't really matter which two. I just need to do either these two or these two. These are our LEDs, and we're gonna wanna solder a connector onto this end so we can plug it into our board. And the important thing to note is that there's an arrow on the back of this strip telling us which direction the data is gonna flow down the strip. So we wanna be sure that we're connecting this end of the strip to the board. So I'm gonna cut the strip here, and we don't need to keep this connector. There we go. So it's really tiny, but these pads are marked. The power is on the left, data is in the middle, and ground is on the right. So let's plug everything together and see if it works. Once these things are plugged in, you can get them apart, but you have to be careful not to pull the wires out of the connectors. So if you yanked on the wire. Yeah, so I always use tweezers to try to pull them out. All right, so it's on. Okay, so let's check our switch. This should turn it off and on. Off. Oh, very good. On. So that's separate from activating the lightsaber. That's just to cut power to the whole system. Yep. Very cool. When we press this button, we should have some lightsaber mm -hmm. action. Okay, ready? Yay! Yay! <laughs> it works! Uh, oh, it I love sounds it. good. I love it when I, I thought that was a high five yeah. coming. <laughs> uh, and if we poke it, it should, it should, uh, Yes! It should, uh... <laughs> Yay! Yay! And that was legitimately the first try. Yeah! Top notch. You love it when a plan comes together. Very good. I'm so excited to finally finish this thing now that I know it all works. Uh, Sophie, this, the wires and everything look so tidy, so much better than what I normally do. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, but I need to put all this in there, and, I, and my plan is to put most of this on this sled that I made, and that slides right in there. Makes all of my electronics removable so I can charge the battery. I did have to alter the design of Ray's Blaster a tiny bit, uh, specifically the, the button to turn it on and off. That's going to be this right there. Obviously not in the original design. I did want to make this the power button. Uh, however, the blade needs to go in here and I, I just couldn't find enough room in there. So, so that is the one not exactly like the movie thing that I have right there. Uh, but I'm okay with it. Uh, I think the first thing I want to do then is install this in there. Just a practice run here. All right, I think that'll work. Now the real run. I'm just using the little super glue. That's, that's in there. It's time to attach all these guys to my little uh, surfboard here. And the shiny side was printed down, and this chamfer needs to be on the bottom. So I'm just telling myself that so I put this together correctly. This switch is gonna go on there with these little two millimeter screws. And I just made little plastic blocks to be able to attach this at a 90 degree to that. A little something I remember doing back when I was doing a lot of RC cars as a kid, attaching components to the frame of a little RC10 car. But uh, I chamfered the uh, inside of these as well so that these countersink screws are flush so that they won't interfere with the sliding action. And that is our switch attached. The uh, battery's gonna go here. Uh, you know what, let's, let's hot glue this connection. This should help in case this gets any strain on it. Uh, I don't want it flying off. Next is our board here. And I'm gonna take it apart to make it a little easier to screw it in. More of these little M2 screws and they're gonna thread right into the plastic there. Oh, Yeah, that's great. Wonderful. And then that can plug right on there. Now the battery is gonna go on. It'll plug in here, and that goes on with zip ties. Wonderful. Uh, this goes in the power there. I can plug my power switch in now. 
my activator switch anyway. And then uh, this sticks down in the tube a bit and it's gonna land somewhere around here. So I need to make sure the wires are tidied up enough to allow for that to happen. And I think I'm good. There it is, it just took a little finicky finagling in there. Uh, this happens to be the exact diameter for our speaker too. So I'm just gonna tack that in there with a tiny bit of super glue or hot glue. <laughs> I designed this end cap here with these little uh, retention snappy doos. And I had to sand those a bit to get it to work perfectly, but now that can go in there and just snap in place. And that keeps, of course, the sled from sliding out. Power's on, close it up, give it a go. Is it time? Yeah, you go first. Okay. Yes! Yeah. Awesome! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's we, in there. Yes. We just need one more thing. Yes. The blades. The blades. <laughs> These are our blade materials, starting with a one inch outer diameter polycarbonate tube. Okay. This won't be a combat ready lightsaber. This is plastic, it's really thin. I'm not gonna be clashing with things, uh, but this is still kind of like the standard lightsaber blade. Uh, and then we have our LED strips from before, but we, we wired a, a second one in parallel. Yep. We want it to be a little bit brighter. Uh, this is what the LED strips are gonna live on. It's just a piece of chloroplast. Any thin material that's white, hopefully, uh, for color should help. And then to diffuse it, we have parchment paper. And this is like, this is right out of the Adafruit playbook, the, yep. the, the tutorial they did. Yep. Uh, so all we have to do is put this all together and stuff it into our lightsaber handle. My chloroplast I cut to the same length as my tube, which is three feet long. And I want to do the same thing with the uh, LEDs here. These last 10 I'm going to cut off. And they're still good. We're going to keep them. Because that's like $18 worth of Neopixels right there. <laughs> uh, and then I don't think we need this silicone sleeve either. Voila. Uh, and then I guess we can use that to tie something. I don't know. I what do you do with it. this stuff? You know what it is good for is uh, when you need to squish hot glue down and yeah. it's still hot. Oh. You can squish it with that and it doesn't stick. That's amazing. It's silicone, so I, right. I guess it. I'll keep it. The LED strips are going to go on either side of this piece of chloroplast. And then we can just we can just tape it there okay. with some clear tape. I like that we we'll be able to extract these LEDs and potentially change them if we ever have to. Mm -hmm. It's fairly non-permanent. Hey, while well, I've got you guys here, if you haven't subscribed already, you owe it to yourself to hit that bell so that you know when we have our next video coming out. I don't know what that next video is gonna be, but I promise it's going to be awesome. Before I install the LEDs, I wanna put my cap on the end of the blade. This is just a little thing I 3D printed with clear filament and I'm hoping just the light will diffuse through that and then I think a touch of hot glue will be all it takes to uh, secure that. A little there, a little there, and in we go. And I can just do that and that'll work. To diffuse our light we've got parchment paper that should make it nice and soft and not have hot spots mm -hmm. and all we want to do is wrap it around this core that we've made. Uh, it doesn't need to get glued or taped or anything, it'll just get stuffed in there. So I think we ought to just wrap that. Oh, also, I need to thank the members of the Extra Credit Club for all the support. Uh, we've been doing build discussion videos on this as we've been working through it, and Sophie's been in them. It's been super fun. Uh, so if you want a fun way to help support what we do and get extra content like behind the scenes vlogs, and build discussion videos every week, then head over to the link in uh, the description and see how you can sign up. Right now it's Patreon and right here on YouTube. Uh, check it out and thanks for the support. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. It just has to go in the lightsaber now. Everything's looking pretty good. This thing though, I wanna just lock it in there a little bit with some hot glue. Oh, and while I'm at it, I need to thank Sonali G again for the help on this one. The uh, NAS that they hooked us up with is amazing. Sophie and I were able to share files 
the print files and everything for this project as we were working on it directly from the hard drives we have sitting right in our office, which was really, really uh, convenient for this project. So thank you, Synology, for all the help. You guys are great. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Okay, let's feed our plug through there. Do you see it? Yep, oh! Oh, perfect. There it is. So the blade is just friction fit in there and it's really snug. I had to sand it a little bit to really get it to go in there, but that's all it needs to stay in. Again, I'm not swinging this thing around a lot. There it is. This is awesome. Sophie, thanks so much for hanging out and helping with this project. Thanks for having me, it's yeah, been awesome. It's great. You guys need to go check out Sophie's work on Instagram, especially the cool 3D printing and fabric stuff you've been doing. It's awesome. Thanks. Also, the 3D files for this are all available, linked down below. Uh, and for all the code and everything, there's the tutorial that Adafruit put together. That's killer, and we'll link to that as well. All the resources you need to make your own lightsaber. And this is the last part. Sophie, grab your saber. <laughs> 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 it's so cool! It's so awesome! Uh, it totally works! Ready? Gentle tap. Yeah. <laughs> Just like I always wanted. Oh, that's so cool. Try it again. <laughs> It's in. <laughs> it's perfect. And then, uh, great. Good job, Bill. We're good. So, I'm sorry, I totally just blanked out on. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it, I think it unrolled a little bit. I, I gotta roll it tighter. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we'll be ready to defeat. Uh, I guess Kylo Ren. Yeah. We're coming for you. Yeah. Can we do that again? <laughs> Hey, I didn't even put it in the slot. I missed. <laughs> there's a there's a groove. It's got to run in these in these grooves in there. I put this on upside down. No, I didn't. I'm good. Every, there's a moment in every build where you you gotta ask yourself the hard questions. <laughs>